One of humanity's biggest challenges today is finding a way to produce a large amount of energy to meet our needs. Electricity use is increasing as wealthy populations have higher living standards and consume more technology. In emerging markets, more people are entering the grid than ever before, which means they will start increasing their reliance on electricity. However, our power grid heavily relies on non-renewable energies that worsen climate change. This is unsustainable for several reasons and will get worse as more people rely on it, so it is important we find a good solution to this problem. Reducing energy use and reliance is not realistic in my opinion because it would require drastic cuts. There's a really interesting website called footprintcalculator.org that shows you how many Earths would be needed if everyone had the same lifestyle as you. I link it in the bio if you'd like to check it out, but if you've never thought much about your personal emissions, it can be pretty eye-opening. A more popular solution is to make our energy production more sustainable, and that means being both renewable and environmentally friendly. You've likely heard of solar, wind, geothermal, or nuclear fission, but the holy grail of renewable energies is nuclear fusion. Hello everybody, welcome to Future Leaps, the channel where we look at everything in science, technology, and engineering to learn about what they are and discuss what potential they have for the future. In this video, we will learn the physics behind nuclear fusion, how engineers are trying to replicate it, and what potential the technology has on the future of our power grid. Nuclear fusion is a process that naturally happens in stars. Our star is mainly hydrogen plasma, and in the core of the sun, the pressure and heat is so high that some of the nuclei in the hydrogen plasma fuse together. As two hydrogen fuse, it becomes helium and as a byproduct, emits energy. This energy then travels the 92 million miles to Earth where it keeps our oceans liquid, our plants happy, and our skin burnt. The amount of energy can be calculated using Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, where c is the speed of light, which is constant. The change in energy is proportional to the change in mass, and in this scenario, the mass of the helium minus the mass of two hydrogens. Looking up the masses of both atoms, we find that one helium weighs slightly less than two hydrogen atoms, so our total change in energy is negative. This value, this negative energy, is equal to the energy emitted. But fusion only occurs in stars, so what parameters need to be met for a reaction to begin? Well, if you put two hydrogen atoms next to each other, they will repel each other. Their nuclei are both positively charged, so they act like magnets. Note that I'm ignoring the electrons. This is because fusion occurs in plasma, and by definition plasma is ionized gas, so the atoms do not have any electrons. They're just the nucleus. While this is happening, the strong force wants to pull the atoms closer together, but it is too weak compared to the electromagnetic force. The Coulomb barrier represents the amount of energy that is needed to overcome this repulsion and let the two protons fuse. This is achievable by raising the temperature to increase kinetic energy. In other words, the atoms need to move really fast so that if they get close enough, they will not repel, they will collide. However, this is not a guarantee, but rather a, a probability. And this starts to touch into quantum mechanics, but to simplify it, quantum tunneling can override the Coulomb barrier, even if there is not enough kinetic energy. I'm sure you've heard the analogy, where if you throw a tennis ball at a wall, there is a very small probability that it will pass through. This is quantum tunneling. The likelihood of this happening is very low, but it increases as kinetic energy gets higher. The probability can be calculated using this equation for gamma factor. With all this information in mind, how can we replicate fusion on Earth and how can we capture that energy to create power? There are several projects around the world working on this, and several have had successful tests. The two most common methods are laser fusion and tokamaks. Laser fusion involves shooting several laser pulses at the fuel to increase its energy. This is done at the National Ignition Facility in Livermore. This project successfully started fusion in 2009, but it was net energy negative, so it used more energy than it created. Tokamaks use magnetic fields to influence the proton's energy and direction. The plasma is confined to a torus shape where it can fuse and release energy. This is a more popular method as it is able to produce more energy. The current leader in fusion energy is JET, which inputs 24 megawatts and had an output of 16 megawatts. 
And so this is still net negative, but it is much higher than the alternatives. There are several planned projects of Tokamax, uh, CFETR in China, KDEMO in South Korea, and most famously ITER in France. ITER is an international project with 35 countries contributing to it. It is designed to have a net positive energy output of 500 megawatts with an input of only 50. It is currently under construction, but once assembly finishes in 2025, it plans to do its first plasma test. Then finally, in 2035, it should be completely operational, intended for experimental purposes and to prove fusion is possible. If this is successful, it will be followed up by DEMO, which has an input of 80 megawatts and an output of 2,000. All these projects sound nice on paper, but we will just have to wait and see if they experience any delays or difficulties. This brings us to the last topic, what are the pros and cons of nuclear fusion, and is it actually the best option out there? Right off the bat, it is still very early on in the developmental phase. We can expect that after net positive fusion is done, there's still going to be a gap between reactors for research and reactors for our energy grid. By the time this happens, it may not be economical to build these reactors. Although it is net positive on energy, the infrastructure and fuel costs may be too high for an individual company, and it may just be cheaper to use fossil fuels or renewables, like solar. Now let's say this is not the case, and in the far future, fusion power plants are common. One benefit is that they are safe for society and the environment. Fusion is very clean since the only byproduct is helium. There is little to no radiation or harmful waste produced, and if the reactor fails, it will simply die down. A lot of people hear nuclear and think about nuclear fission which was the cause for accidents like the Fukushima disaster, but fusion is very different from fission, and this will not happen. Also, it is a fact that nuclear fission causes the lowest numbers of death per kilowatt produced, whereas something like coal is the highest. Since we know fusion is safer than fission, we can expect it to also become the safest form of energy ever. Overall, nuclear fusion definitely has potential to become a great source of energy, and hopefully we will see significant progress in the near future. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, I hope you liked this video, if so consider subscribing and leave a comment telling me what you think, bye!